From April 18 to 21, 2006, Chinese President Hu led a Chinese delegation to visit the United States. On April 19, President Hu visited the final assembly plant of Boeing in the United States. Alan Mulally, president of Boeing Commercial Airplanes, praised a man's tremendous contribution to Boeing. The person he mentioned made all the Chinese present feel extremely proud. Some people call him the father of Boeing. Incredibly, the father of Boeing is actually a Chinese. In 1916, Boeing was born in a handicraft workshop in Seattle, USA, and has gradually developed into a giant in the global aerospace field over the past century. But few people know that the early rise of Boeing is inseparable from a Chinese. He is Boeing's first aerospace engineer Wang Tzu. In today's video, we will talk about Wang Tzu's flying life. Okay, let's get started. Wang Tzu was born in Beijing in 1893. In 1909, 16-year-old Wang Tzu and several young students went to England to start their study abroad trip. After seeing the Manchu government being oppressed by foreign powers, he was very eager to learn advanced knowledge abroad and return to serve his country. Learn from the advanced technologies in the West in order to resist the invasion of the Western powers was the slogan of every young Chinese with aspirations at that time. At a naval university in the UK, Wang Tzu came into contact with aircraft manufacturing. In 1912, Wang Tzu and his friends flew in the plane of an aviator. This flight experience left a deep impression on him. At this time, it was less than 10 years since the Wright brothers produced the first aircraft. Wang Tzu keenly felt that this big flying guy would have a profound impact on people in the future, so he began to study aircraft manufacturing hard. But soon, the flames of World War I spread to the United Kingdom. Wang Tzu and several Chinese students came to the United States to study. In 1915, Wang Tzu and others came to MIT to study aeronautical engineering. After graduation, Wang Tzu looks forward to returning home and using what he has learned to help the motherland in aircraft manufacturing. Unfortunately, the current situation in China was very chaotic at that time, and they could not return home. At this time, Wang Tzu met a special person. After that, the Chinese left a strong mark in the history of world aircraft manufacturing. This special man Wang met was named William Edward Boeing. Yes, that's right, Boeing is named after him. In 1916, William founded the airline, which was later renamed Boeing Airplane Company. In the same year, on the recommendation of a friend, William met Wang Tzu, who convinced William with his expertise in aircraft manufacturing. Soon, William hired Wang Tzu as the first chief engineer of Boeing Aircraft Company. The C-type seaplane designed and manufactured by Wang Tzu soon won an order for 50 aircraft for Boeing, which is the order Boeing desperately needed at the time, without the Boeing would likely have gone out of business. With Wang Tzu's talent, Boeing Aircraft has officially gained a firm foothold, which is why some people call Wang Tzu the father of Boeing. As the chief engineer of Boeing, Wang Tzu's position is very important. If he continues to stay in the United States, he will be able to achieve a career. However, after less than a year at Boeing, Wang Tzu returned home angrily. The C-type seaplane was designed and manufactured by Wang Tzu, but what is ridiculous is that during the flight test, the United States did not allow Wang Tzu to enter the flight test site. The reason was actually that he was worried that Wang Tzu would steal the highest aviation technology from the United States. After returning to the motherland, Wang Tzu immediately devoted himself to industrial construction. In 1918, Wang Tzu participated in the establishment of China's first regular aircraft factory and was appointed as the deputy director. But it is a pity that this young man who has made great achievements in the history of world aircraft manufacturing has never been able to reproduce his glory. In the early days, the Chinese aircraft manufacturing factory did not have special funds or special workshops, so they had to use the dilapidated workshops of the former shipyards to convert them into workshops, not to mention the materials and professional equipment used to manufacture aircraft. However, even in this difficult environment, Wang Tzu and others still managed to overcome various difficulties and finally manufactured China's first seaplane in 1919. 
Although the plane was built, another problem arose. China was in turmoil at the time, and many people had never heard of airplanes. Therefore, finding a professional pilot in China to conduct test flights has become a difficult problem for Wang Tzu. In the end, in desperation, they have no choice but chosen overseas Chinese with only tens of hours of experience in aircraft to conduct a test flight. However, no one expected that Wang Tzu's painstaking efforts turned into a tragedy in this test flight. During the test flight, due to the pilot's inexperience and improper operation, the plane stalled and crashed. The only thing that is fortunate is that the pilot survived. At that time, the parking and maintenance of seaplanes were difficult problems. After in-depth research, Wang Tzu and his friends finally built the world's first seaplane floating hangar. In the following years, Wang Tzu trained the first batch of aeronautical engineers for China. Wang Tzu and his friends compiled textbooks and taught them in person, imparting what they knew and learned. During the Chinese anti-Japanese war, in the fierce battle with the Japanese Air Force, many Chinese Air Force heroes were students of Wang Tzu. Such talents are naturally a thorn in the eyes of the Japanese. In 1928, Bai Yuzhao, Wang Tzu's friend who studied with him and studied bombers, was poisoned by the Japanese. Even so, Wang Tzu did not stop developing the bomber. In 1934, under the charge of Wang Tzu, the Central Hangzhou Aircraft Factory manufactured the first Northrop medium bomber and mass-produced it. During the anti-Japanese war, these bombers performed well on the battlefield, shooting down and destroying Japanese aircraft, ships and vehicles many times. During the anti-Japanese war, Wang Tzu was one of the top officials in China's aviation manufacturing industry at that time, but he was always fighting in the front line of aircraft design and manufacturing. His office has no desk, just a long drafting table covered with drawings. In 1946, Wang Tzu almost created another miracle in the world's aerospace history. He developed a giant glider that could carry 30 paratroopers. At that time, the largest glider in the world could only carry more than 10 paratroopers. It's a pity that Wang Tzu's research results were not taken seriously, and the drawings of the most advanced glider in the world at that time were locked in a safe, and finally disappeared. The fate of Wang Tzu is also quite similar to this blueprint. After that, he never participated in the development of the aircraft. Later, Wang Tzu served as a professor in the university. Through time, we seem to see an old man in his late twilight, carrying textbooks, walking in the sunset. Who would have thought that this old man was not only the first chief designer of a world-renowned aircraft company, but also made great contributions to the development of China's aviation industry? In 2007, among the 16 personalized stamps issued by China in the Chinese Aviation Heroes, Wang Tzu was impressively listed. This veteran who has made great contributions to the motherland has returned to Chinese vision again in this way. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas with other people. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. Hot Topics Time, time to explore the wisdom behind the news. We will see you in the next video.